virgin, lived a holy life, died on the cross for my sins, raised from the dead. I believe that. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to come into my heart right now. Cleanse me. Forgive me. And help me, Holy Spirit, to live a Christian life. I thank you, Lord. You're excited about me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now, please come up after the end of the service. We have some people here who would love to meet with you and talk with you. There will be all the workers down here. In case you don't know, I'm Pastor John Lowe. And uh, I'm... And I have an announcement for you. Uh, it's called a confession. And uh, so it says to, you know, to the family, to the church, Debbie and I have been out of town attending the funeral. My absence at this time was not about self-protection. We were caring for hurting people. That's why I'm here today. To follow a biblical process of confession, repentance, and forgiveness. If God wants anything out of us, as we just heard, it's to bring healing to all who are involved. I committed adultery. It was nearly 20 years ago. It continued far too long. It involved one person and there's been no other nor any other situations of unbecoming conduct, conduct for the last 20 years. I will not use the Bible to defend, protect, and deflect my past sin. I have no defense. I committed the adultery. To say it plainly, I didn't make a mistake. I didn't have an issue didn't have an affair, I didn't make a misjudgment, I sinned. I need to say that and you deserve to hear it. I have been asked why did I wait so long to deal with it? Why hide it all these years? The answer, there is no good answer. I told myself for years, silence served to protect everyone, the other person, those closest to her, from the hurt and from the public embarrassment. And I'd like to think that was true. But the truth is that silence was to protect myself as well. While applying church discipline for sexual failure, for repentance, confession, and restoration, I myself had not been disciplined for sexual misconduct. I will not use the Bible to defend myself or to beat you into scriptural submission. Twenty years ago, I repented. Now the day for this fresh hurt, I ask you to forgive me for the deep wound that I have caused. I make no excuse for my sin. The betrayal of dear friendship, trust, and love is beyond my ability to express. The church is engaged in a healthy biblical process to restore your trust to the ministry here at New Life. Meanwhile, I hope you believe God called you here. Meanwhile, I hope you believe that God called you here, perhaps for such a time as this. To believe, to forgive, to heal, so that God can reveal his goodness to you. The next few weeks while the church is in this biblical process, please be in a lot of prayer. Stay faithful to Jesus. To my wife and family who I've deeply hurt, I have confessed my sin. They have graciously forgiven me and expressed their love to me, which also is deeply humbling. To those that I sinned against, 
many years ago and recently by keeping this in the dark. And to those of you who are wounded from this fresh hurt, to you, the church, I repent for the adultery and my silence. Please forgive me. In accordance with our church bylaws, I'm stepping aside, stepping down from ministry responsibilities and have committed to the Lord and now to you that I will submit to the process and recommendations of this board. Let us talk. Amen. For 27 years, I lived in a prison. It was not 20 years. I lived in a prison of lies and shame, lying to protect the Lowe family. For years, I thought I was a horrible person having suicidal thoughts, not realizing what had been truly done to me, that I was a victim and I would still be in a prison if my brother, and many of you know him, Edgar Wolf, had not approached me just two weeks ago with what he had seen as a teenager that bothered him all these years. His pastor in bed with his younger sister, with t-shirt and underwear on. People knew but were too afraid to come forward, and they have now. The lies and the manipulation have to stop. I was a prisoner and you kept me in your prison. I'm a prisoner no longer. I was just 16 when you took my virginity on your office floor. Do you remember that? I know you do and I have plenty of other stories that I could bring to your remembrance. You did things to my teenage body that had never and should have never been done. If you can't admit the truth, you have to answer to God. You are not the victim here. I tried to tell someone, but all that was done was cover up. No one ever came to me. No one ever helped me. No one ever got me counseling. I have wanted to talk to somebody all of these years and never. You have. You have somebody that you've talked to. I never have. The church deserves to know the truth. This church has been built on lies, but no more. The lies need to stop. I could give story after story after story to what you did to me. Michael, I, your dad is not the victim here. A partial truth is not true. A part if I would have gotten counseling, your dad would be in prison. It might not be the way, but every time you covered up for Russ Spankle. My best friend was my age when your associate pastor was molesting his two daughters. And you know that. You sent him to be a pastor in another church. We can call Melanie right now and Cassie, her sister. They sat down with you. You sent Melanie away. Don't look at me like that. You know the truth. I know, but you can tell the truth because this is a lie. But you need to tell the truth. You know better than it was. Listen, you know my wife is not just adultery. It's another level when it's a teenager. And I will not let this man talk about my wife like that. It happened for nine years. When she was 15, 16, the sexual grooming started. And it lasted until she met me and we started dating. This is the truth. And that's all we're going to say. Because Except, just, that's, that's it. have numbers? That's, that's fine. This necklace was Bobby's. It was given to her by Joe Lowe II and possibly other people in the office. They might have received necklaces too as like a ministry gift. I'm, I'm not trying to stretch the truth here. But it was in her house and I'm giving it back. This was Bobby's coming out of purity ring, which she wore while this man had sex with her. And she felt ashamed all these years wearing a covenant of purity ring. She fell out of shame and guilt. We are working through love and forgiveness. We are working through it. But people have to be held accountable and they can't just, they can't just bamboozle people 
and just say, well, I just committed adultery. It was far beyond adultery. So here's the covenant purity ring back. I don't want it in my home. We're done. That's just the way it is. It's not all true, but that did happen, yes. She should have. I can't do anything about that except to tell you that if I could go back and redo it all, I would. I can't. And all I can do is ask you to forgive me. And I'm doing what the Bible process or biblical process is in the church. I'm stepping down, stepping aside. And, uh, you know, it's been 20 years. I know, I guess it doesn't count for anything. We love them. I deeply hurt them. I deeply hurt you. I ask you to forgive me. And that's all I can do. Uh, we thank you for your word being true and working in our lives. John, you love us so much. We're sorry for everything that we have done wrong in our lives. And we pray that you guide us this week, that we pray that you just help us. We love you so much, God. God, I pray for this body that has been wounded, that you begin to heal us, Lord. That you can begin to bring us back together as a human Lord. All sin has consequences, but you are faithful and just in all that you do. I'm not watching. 